So a year ago to the day, I did this self-portrait using my alcohol-based markers to celebrate the new year. Today, I'm gonna to take the opportunity to reflect on 2020 as well as complete my annual self-portrait of 2021. Kia ora everyone, this is Hey Johanna. It is so weird to me that this portrait was done a year ago. It feels simultaneously like it's only been a few weeks and also like it's been several long years. But I am so ready to do another and see what progress, if any, I've made in this year. So for this new portrait, I'm gonna be using my brush marker and pro markers from Winsor & Newton. I'm also gonna be using my Copic sketch markers and my Copic chows. I love these so, so much and I've managed to build my collection a little bit over the years. And finally, I'm gonna be using my Ohuhu Art brush markers for these as well. I'll probably only use a couple of these colors because I only have a few, but hopefully you'll see these in there as well. So for the outlines of this piece, I'm just gonna be using normal black fine liners. I've got quite the collection here, but my favorite are definitely the Pigma Microns, but I also really, really like the Unipin fine liners. So you'll probably see me using these two the most. Some of the other supplies you might see me using are my white gel pens, which I like to use for highlights. I've got my Uniball Signo pen here and also the Jelly Roll pen. I don't love using these as much as the Uniball Signos, but they're still good. You might also see me using my Posca pens just for final details because they are super, super opaque and I just really, really love using them. Maybe I'll use my gold ink or even my glitter watercolors from Fine Tech, which are just right here. I'm not really sure. I do end up using a lot of different supplies for these portraits, so I suppose we'll just see what we end up with. But for now, let's just get straight into the line art. I've just finished up the line art of this portrait. I have scanned it so that if I ever feel like recoloring it or coloring it digitally, I can do that without much hassle. This is something I 100% recommend you do every single time because I have been caught out before wishing I had a scan of the line art for one reason or another. I know it's so, so easy to be lazy and jump right into the coloring, but seriously, take the time, scan your art. It is so worth it. Okay, let's get into the coloring. Okay, so I think it's time to start on the skin and I'm gonna start in this little area of the arm here because it gives me a little bit of time to warm up and kind of get used to the colors, get used to the blending and it's not a very, it's not a very important part of the artwork. I, if I jumped right in with the face and started messing it up, then I'd be really disappointed. But if I start with this little section of the arm, I can sort of warm up a little bit and make my mistakes nice and early and then, I usually leave the face till last because it scares me the most, but hopefully this will turn out well. You can do it. It's just a drawing. It's just an artwork. It's not gonna hurt you. As you can see, my greys are just like my most used markers. I use them all the time. I'm always desaturating my colors with my greys. I'm always 
using them to add the shadows, to add more depth and dimension to my drawings. I just love having greys. And I recommend that if you're trying to build a marker collection, that you get yourself a couple of really good greys. Definitely some warm ones and definitely some cool ones because they, they are different. They change things a lot. The only problem with using the greys is that the end result does end up looking quite <laughs> grey. I'm actually kind of liking this with the really hot, hot highlight there. I might leave it for now and then go back in later on if I decide that it's just a little too light. But with the skin tone and then the sort of dark top, I'm getting this really moody, grungy kind of vibe from this. And I'm looking at it on camera, it looks a lot more like orangey pink than it does in real life. It's quite a beigey sort of tone, but actually on camera it looks really bad. <laughs> oh god. Maybe if I add a little bit of darkers up here. Oh, that's what it'll do. I'll add a bit more pink. Yeah, so that made it look bright orange on camera, but it's, it's just sort of this warm pinky glow in real life. It's very tempting when you're drawing skin to only go for these sort of skin tone colors and only color in the skin with those. But what I like to do to sort of add a little something and give the skin a little bit more life is to use colors such as lavender and blue and especially yellow. You'll notice if you look really closely at photos and basically in real life as well that skin is not just one color. It's not just beige or brown or really, really pale. It's got all these sorts of colors in it. It's got the colors from underneath the skin. You see some of the veins sometimes which bring out the blue. You know, especially with men, if they've got uh, hair growing on their face, they've got that five o'clock shadow which gives it this kind of bluey gray kind of look. So I really like to add a little bit of fleck of color in, especially blue in the shadows. And I quite like putting yellow in the areas where the highlights are and sort of just blending that out with my skin tone colors. And then you sort of get just more life from your drawing. A really light pink color is really good to put on skin as well because it's kind of natural in a way and it does sort of bring a little bit more life to the drawing. So I've decided that this white highlight is just a little bit too white. So I'm going to fill it in with this lightest color. I'm going to go over it really softly so that I keep that lightness there, but it's just too stark white at the moment. It's kind of too contrasty. There we go. It looks a bit better. Don't be afraid to use colors you never would think of for skin. You do want to be a little bit careful with these more intense colors though, because with these you can't really take back a stroke. I think I might be overworking this drawing. Maybe I should just go to bed. Okay, I'm going to do this side of the arm first because I'm still kind of like warming up to my supplies. I'm gonna go in with my intense purple. This is V06 and it's called Lavender. Let me just show you what it looks like. Like that is it, full saturation. So you can see that it's a very intense color to use as a shadow color. But if you just kind of use it very sparingly and make sure that you are blending it out as you go, then it gives you this really cool kind of moody shadow look. And in a way it looks more realistic. And I think that that's really, really cool. So that only took me 10 minutes, whereas that took me nearly 20 minutes. So you can see that I'm already warming up to these markers and warming up to sort of the combinations that I'm using them in and getting a bit more familiar with it. So hopefully <laughs> that means I'm getting more comfortable and by the time I'm ready to do the face, it'll all go well. Cross fingers.
Okay, so this is looking a whole lot better now that I've actually colored in the face and the hair and the hat and everything. It actually looks like a cohesive piece, so I'm much, much happier with it. I'm going to be starting on the background now, which is going to be quite plain and simple, I think. So I'm going to be using these two colors here. I've got the YG03 from Copic, which is yellow green, and then the GY6 from Uhuhu, which is called Anise, but it's a sort of yellowy kind of color. Hopefully that will bring this whole thing together. I really hope I don't ruin it at this point because I am starting to love it. So let's get into the background. Okay, so this is looking really, really good now. It's much more finished and polished looking. I am just gonna go in and add some final details with my gel pens, maybe my Posca pens as well, just to really finish it off. I'm gonna film this next part with my phone because they will be such small details, you probably won't even be able to see them on the main camera. So let's finish off this drawing. So here is my finished portrait. I am so happy with how it came out. I swear I could not have done better, so this is pretty much a perfect representation of my ability. I think it's also a really, really good representation of myself. I totally recognize myself in this drawing. Obviously it is stylized, it's not a realism portrait, and I do think I've drawn myself prettier than I am in real life, but it's still really clearly me, so I'm super happy with how it came out. When I compare it to last year's drawing, I am absolutely blown away by my improvement. I was so worried that I wouldn't see any progress in a year, but the difference is kind of shocking. To be fair, I put a lot more hours into this piece. At an estimate, I'd say this one was around the 10 hour mark, which is double what I spent on last year's drawing, but I'm fairly certain I would have seen an improvement either way, just maybe not to this extent. Thank you so, so much for coming along with me on this journey. It really means a lot to me, especially because self-portraits are so personal and can be quite emotional for me. So I really, really appreciate you taking the time to watch. I hope you all have an amazing start to 2021. Kia ora everyone, have a wonderful evening and I promise I'll see you very soon. Bye.